Terrific. Now we're moving into mistakes themselves. We're going to talk about mistakes that translators have. These are clumsy mistakes, you might say, but nonetheless, they are mistakes. They're words that should not, they should not have translated it that way. And you have quite a few of these, Morad, don't you? So let's go ahead and bring you in. Tell me, give us some introduction as what you mean by mistakes, and then I'll ask you to go ahead and share your PowerPoint. Yeah, these mistakes shows that these translators uh, at the very least, they do not know Arabic well, and they did not spend the time to look into the words through an Arabic dictionary. So they made these mistakes, and these mistakes are prevalent in almost every single translation. So people will be surprised when I correct these mistakes, as we see in the upcoming examples. Yeah, now we will talk about the word asbat and how it's actually translated in every single translation. It says in the Arabic, أَمْ تَقُولُونَ إِنَّ إِبْرَهِيمَ وَإِسْمَعِيلُ وَإِسْحَاقُ وَيَعْقُوبُ وَالْأَصْبَاطِ This is the word. So here, we are talking about the children of Israel, and it says الأصبات. It is always translated as tribes, and sometimes as descendants. Well, this is wrong, because tribes is قبائل, even till today. Descendants is also wrong. The correct word is a very specific type of grandchildren which will be in my translation. It is a grandson that is specifically through one's daughter. So now if I'm a grandfather, I have a daughter and then she gave birth to a son. This is my slipped. This is very critical. No one ever looked at this, despite it being in the Arabic dictionary. So there is a difference between Sipta and Hafid. Hafid will be the grandson through the son, but Sipt the grandson through the daughter. So this is mistake number 16, and I will ask you what do you think of this, sir? Okay, so what you're doing really here is you're just saying, listen, this is this is the it, it just look at the dictionary. The dictionary is exact exactly uh, stipulates that uh, we have the same thing in English. Uh, we have a, a diff a diff. You have a context of whether or not through the male line or through the female male line. If in many, not everybody, but in most places, if you're uh, if I'm the male and I have a mother, and my son is uh, looks at her as my grant her his granny but if it's my wife's mother mother she is the grandma grandma versus granny in the same way you have the same thing here with grandchildren having two different categories depending if it comes to the male or the female line in this case they got they just used the wrong translation they should have been they should have done that clumsily i'm assuming am i correct yes and especially now we are talking about the children of israel we are talking about descendants and which uh, bloodline and all this stuff is very important. Uh, you cannot make a mistake like this in such a context. No, so, of course, this is a, a very big mistake. Yep, yep, you're right. That's a big mistake. Thank you. Now we will move on to another blunt mistake. And this means that these people uh, uh, really didn't open a dictionary. It says here, وَأَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَةِ مَا أَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَةِ The word is المشأمة. What does it mean? In almost every single translation, it says the people of the left. The people or the companions of the left. And here, Hilali and Khan says, people of the left hand, i.e. those who were given the record with their left hands. So, uh, I don't know how, why he did this, but... He just did this. But the problem is, the word mash'ama has nothing to do with a left hand. Mash'ama comes from shu'm, meaning pessimism. It has nothing to do with hands. Why do they have it as left hand? Well, uh, people, they can ask them. I, I do not have a good uh, explanation. So the Quran is saying, those of pessimism, the companions who are pessimistic, what about the companions who are pessimistic? And I ask you, what do you think of this one? Okay, now let me, let me just make sure I'm getting you correct. And let me just throw something at you to see if this is correct as well. We all know that in 
societies where they didn't have toilet paper, the left hand is what you use to uh, with water uh, to clean yourself when you're going to the toilet. And so therefore, you the, the, it is seen as something that's dirty, something that is not clean. So could this be the reason why they put left hand in there rather than pessimism? Because pessimistic is such as something that is negative. Would that be the reason they're putting this and calling it the left hand? Or is this a colloquial idiomatic expression that's from that that is a more modern way of saying that? Or why or the question I would ask is why didn't they just put the word pessimism in there in English? Well, because of two reasons. One, they are filled with the standard Islamic narrative, which says that people uh, in the end days they will get the book with the right hand. Of course, this is in the Quran. But uh, whenever the Quran says that, yes, it does say you will get the book with or your record with your right hand and others with their left hand. So here they thought that this is one and the same. They thought that the word Maymana and Mash'ama is like Yameen and Shimal. This is a big uh, problem. Maymana means auspicious. Mash'ama means pessimism. This has nothing to do with Yameen and Shamal, or Shimal in the Quran, which means right hand and left hand. They confused the two. You see? Hold on a minute. This also has theological implications that if you're saying this, if I'm hearing you correctly, at judgment time, you're either given the right hand or the left hand, and depending if which where you're going to heaven or hell, right? If you're giving it on your left hand, you're going to hell. If you're giving it on your right hand, you're going to heaven. Am I correct? Yes. So if they put left in here, this has this is much more dire. This is much more uh, uh, the ramifications of this is they're going to hell. So even that imposes a theological overlay onto this word. Yes, and uh, it's just that they saw the word Maymana, so they assumed that Maymana is the same as Yameen. This is a very bad judgment. The word Maymana comes from Maymoon, meaning auspicious. Mm -hmm. So those who are auspicious and those who are pessimistic. This is what the Quran is actually saying. Okay, good. All right. Moving on to number 18, and it's the word Umma. What does the word Umma mean? And they say, Dr. Mustafa Khattab, clear Quran says, indeed, this religion of yours is only one. When in Arabic it says, Ummatakum, Umma is never religion. In Sahih International, again, your religion is one religion. Religion, no. The word Umma is nation. Why do they have it as religion here? This is a very weird situation. But will they withstand this position? So let's say Ummah is religion. Will they have it as religion in other contexts? Well, here, when it says, بَلْ قَالُوا إِنَّا وَجَدْنَا آبَاءَنَا عَلَىٰ أُمَّةٍ So now, they say a particular way, or again, a religion. What about here? With the very same word mentioned with flying creatures. So here in the plural, it says umamum. Now they are stuck. They have to make it into communities because birds cannot be a religion or a particular way. So the Quran itself, it cracks the code. It says that birds are nations or communities like you. رَبَّنَا وَجْعَلْنَا مُسْلِمِينَ لَكَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَتِنَا أُمَّةٍ مُسْلِمَةٍ But you, as you see here, whenever it says أُمَّةٍ مُسْلِمَةٍ then all of a sudden they go back and say nation. So now أُمَّةٍ is nation. So here the question, if I go back a few slides, why did they say here, Ummatakum umma wahida, your religion is one? Because they do not want it to be your nation is one, because this is the nation of Israel. They don't want that. They want it to be about the religion, and the religion is Islam. So here this is a blunt mistake, or even deception. 
uh, translating the word Ummah into religion is very, very bad. And I'll ask you, what do you think of this? <laughs> I think this is a real killer. This one really does. Uh, you can see this is a problem here. So obviously in chapter 21, verse 92, it's uh, it's very clear that this should not be religion. They're trying to impose it on religion. And so what they're saying is, this is religion when you're saying no if you look anywhere else it is either a community or it is a nation let me just make sure i'm getting you correct on this though this 2192 is talking about the jews am i correct yes so oh prophets indeed this nation of yours is what it should be or this community of yours is one only one but yes i to say this is religion this a separate religion from that which they are they are following Yes, and uh, the Quran in another context it says, "Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas," meaning you were the best nation to go out for mankind. You were in the past because this is talking to the Jews. It has nothing to do with Islam, but they translate it as, "You are the best nation to come out to mankind," meaning Islam. This is fraud. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. This is exciting. Thank you. So now we will move to another word, and this is the word imlaq. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ خِشْيَةْ إِمْلَاقٍ This word imlaq, in any translation, is translated as poverty. Why? Because they did not take the time to look at the difference between imlaq and faqr. Faqir is poor. Mutamalliq is something different. They sound different, they are different. Imlaq is not poverty. Poverty is faqr. Like these poor translations, they are faqir. They, are, uh, they suffer from poverty. <laughs> Imlaq is not poverty. Let me give these translators a little Arabic lesson. The word comes from tamalluq, meaning phoning. F-A-W-N-I-N-G. Seeking approval by ways of flattery. Why no one caught this? Because they don't really care. As long as the translation does not contradict the sin standard Islamic narrative, then they are all good. But linguistic gold nuggets like these do not interest them. They interest me. That is why the Murat translation is unlike anything out there, because I look into these very subtle differences. So uh, the word imlaq means seeking approval by ways of flattery, not poverty. And I ask you, what do you think of this one? Well, obviously, this is, again, I, I, you're, you're being much more accurate. It's not, I, it doesn't make sense why they would want to change it. If they should, they should have known that it means to seek approval. Why in the world do not kill your children for fear of seeking approval, which makes all the sense in the world, not because of poverty. Provide for them and for you, surely killing them is a heinous sin. Obviously, they wanted to put that in there. Now, what, now there's no theological problem here that I can see. It's just an uh, inaccuracy. It's not, it's being uh, in this way, they're, they're just, they're, they're being a little inept. Yeah, but why are they like this? Because they do not take the time to look into stuff like this. They only care if uh, it's talking about the Bible or if it's talking about the Prophet, or if it's talking about anything standard Islamic narrative related. But stuff like this, which has to do with linguistics, they do not care. They just say, well, they are synonyms. Imlaq is the same as poverty. No, it's not. They, they sound different. They are different. You just didn't put the time and the effort into it to look into the subtle differences. Yeah. That's why these translations, uh, a maximum 5 out of 10, if you would grade them in... in in a school or something. <laughs> All right. Five out of 10. We like yours because yours is 10 out of 10. Uh, I would I would say uh, maybe nine. Uh, it's not good that I say 10 out of 10. I will just give this for the people to uh, see what they think. And now we will move to number 20. The word banoon, what does it mean? This verse is very telling. It says, Am lahu al-banat wa lakum al -banun. Or does he have daughters while you have sons? 
The word Banun means sons. It's very clear. Why? Because Banat means daughters. It is clear from this verse that Banun means sons and only sons. Right? Well, not with these Quran translators. The very same word here, Al-Mal wal Banun, Zinat al Hayah. Al Banun here, all of a sudden, is children. When the very same word is mentioned here, all of a sudden it's children. It's not just sons. Now, why is that? Quran translators did not create their own concordance to precisely pinpoint every word before translating the Quran, which led to this mess. Deep down inside, they know and feel that the Quran is a little bit aggressive for the Western mind. So they try to water it down any time they could. Even if they acknowledge that Banun only means sons, that they still are translated as children because they know that excluding daughters will make the Quran look more toxically masculine, if you like, and they don't want that as it will get less people to convert to Islam. So what I am telling you here is very critical. The Quran does not like daughters. All over the Quran, the word Banun, is sons and only sons. There is no children, only sons. And even when it says, Ya Bani Israel, Bani is the same as Banun. They are not the children of Israel. They are the sons and only sons of Israel. And I ask you, what do you think of this one? Well, I think you've not only found the mistake, you've also found the reason for the mistake, which is even more damaging. And that's why it's obvious. We all know that all through the Quran, there is a, a bias against women, against girls. And so here you can see why the translators are trying to obviate that. They don't want this to be any more misogynistic. That's what uh, the, uh, the Quran is absolutely misogynistic. So rather than talk about the sons in contradistinction to the daughters, they just put children there uh, so that this will not come across any more misogynistic than it already is. There's a bias. There's an agenda here. I don't think it's in this case. It's very obvious to me. It's not that they don't know the Arabic. They have they have an agenda behind that. And so you put it out there. Thank you for that. Now, we're going to end these here, and we're going to come back and do some more. Uh, but this is showing me, you've done now one, two, three, five different categories here of mistakes. Obviously, what you're saying and what is happening here is, in some cases, they just didn't know the Arabic, and that would be the case in number 16. But in other cases, there is an agenda. They obviously, the one on hell and pessimism, they wanted it left hand to impose that theological the meaning onto that word with the ummah, uh, with the Jews, not wanting it to be uh, a, a nation, which it is, or communities. They put it and say the Jewish as a religion to impose that onto it. And then, of course, the most damaging one, I think, is the last one you put up there, and that is Benun. Where in reality, it's because of the fact that it makes males higher than the women, which is one thing they don't want any more of the Quran to do, because it's, it's so full of, of this misogynistic statements. They just put the word children there so that it neutralizes it. So there's an agenda there. These are mistakes, but they're not small mistakes. These are intentional mistakes. Thank you so much. Anything you want to end off before we head off to the next, to the next episode? Yeah, uh, just uh, a quick one about Banun. There is also this word Qawm in the Quran, Qawm Aad, Qawm Lut. This word Qawm means men only also. <laughs> so you have men only here and boys only here, sons only here. The Quran doesn't like daughters or women in general, but this is something that they will never show you. And I can prove this from the Arabic dictionary. This is not something that I am making up. Good stuff. All right. That proves just how misogynistic, how male-dominated the writers of the Quran were. And that doesn't fare well in the 21st century. Obviously, the translators who are in the 20th and the 21st century are trying to ameliorate that as best they can. And you're catching them out. God bless you. Thanks so much, Murad. We'll come back with number 21 in the next episode. This is Jay here and Murad there. Over now. out.